This is a brief tutorial on how to solve ordinary differential equations with Python. So you might have a problem like, for example, dy dt equals minus k times y. And you can solve that with uh, various analytical methods to come up with a solution, okay, such as y not e to the minus kt. All right, and that you can do with methods such as separate and integrate, Laplace transforms, and others. But today we're gonna to show how to solve this numerically so that we get a solution as a function of time. So this is an exponential decay, and the value of k influences how quickly it goes to zero. We wanna be able to solve that, and we're gonna do it with Python. So just to get started, there are some instructions here at apmonitor.com slash CHE 263. And if you navigate, uh, actually, let me change that to PDC. Okay, this is the Process Dynamics and Control course. And if you come down here on the right, you'll see Solve with ODE Int. And that's going to be this page that we're going to use to uh, solve. And you can select this notebook right here. That will open up a Jupyter notebook with all of these problems and the solutions. Okay, and let's just go through this together. I'm gonna go ahead and just um, set up one problem with you, and then we're gonna do four exercises as well. All right, so odint is a function in SciPy a package that has three inputs. And let me go ahead and just write over here um, some of those inputs. All right, so we have model initial condition y, and then also t, which is our time. So we need these three inputs into our model. Now this model is gonna be a function uh, this is just going to be a value. So let's say we're starting at a value of five, and then these are all the time points where we want to see a solution. All right, let's go on um, with setting up an example problem. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, first of all, we need to import ODE int. Next, we'll import NumPy and then also matplotlib just to be able to plot the results. Then we need this function, this model function, that returns the derivative. We'll define a new function, we'll call it model, with inputs y and t. And in this case, we have k equals 0 0.3, like we wrote out over here. Okay, so this is our problem right here and we're going to return the derivative value. I'll just return that from the function. So if you inputted something like 0 0.2 comma 1, which would be y equals 0 0.2 and time equals 1, you'd get out a derivative value. Now this one is not dependent on time, only on y. Then we need our initial condition, and we'll say that's equal to 5. And then we need our time points. That's the, another thing that we need to input. And we'll go from 0 to 20 and space those out linearly with 50 points. And you can change that if you want. You could do a third argument, comma 100, and put 100 points in there. Okay, now we want to solve with the ODE solver. And so that's going to be our ODE int. And we have our model this function, the initial condition, why not, and then the time points. And then we want to plot the results. All right, so if we run this, and click Run Anyway, then it's going to evaluate this and then return this plot. So you can see it starts at 5 and then has an exponential decay down to 0. So now the next step is, well, let's say we don't know this value of k before we want to solve it. And so 
we want to have that as an input into our model. So I'll show you how to set that up as well. If you have additional inputs to your model, you have this additional args or arguments that you put in to uh, put in a different k value or other types of inputs that you want. Okay, we're going to have our model the same as before, but now we have this third argument right here, which is our k value. Okay, we have our initial condition, just like before, our time points, same as before. And then we want to solve the ODEs. Uh, now, in this case, we have a third, uh, well, a fourth thing now, which is our args. And we have to put this in as a tuple. So use these types of parentheses. And then you have to have this extra comma there. Okay, this is our only input. Now, if you had two, let's say you had k and then z was another one, then uh, you just, you wouldn't have to put a comma after that. Okay, now we can also solve it with k equals 0 0.2, k equals 0 0.5, and then we want to plot the results. So let's just go ahead and plot all of these and put them on a single plot. Okay, I'm going to run that with control enter, or you can come up here and just hit the run button on each of these cells. Okay, so you can see now we've input with 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.5. So the higher the k value, the faster it decays to zero. Okay, so let's go through some of these exercises now. Um, we have a couple of these exercises. Now, this is an opportunity for you to try these. Okay, the first one, I'll just go ahead and write this out over here. Same as, very similar as before, but instead of a k here, we're just going to add this plus one right there and then k equals one. Now our initial condition is equal to zero. So that's our at time equals zero. We have a value of zero. So let's go ahead and set this one up and solve it as well. First of all, we need our model function. It returns dy dt. Okay, so very um, similar to the last one. If you have anything on this side, okay, let's say you had a 5 there, you just have to divide it over to just be able to return the derivative value. We don't have that in this case, so let's just keep going. Then we're going to need our initial condition, which is equal to 0. And then time points, and we'll go between 0 and 5. We'll solve our ODE. And we want to plot the results. Okay, so here are the results. You see an exponential decay to a value of 1. Let's go with problem 2 now. So this one's just a little bit more challenging. Again, you have this 5 on this side. So let's just go ahead and divide that over on that side before we solve it. Okay, we're going to create our function. In this case, u is also going to step from 0 to 2 at a time of 10. So we're going to put a conditional statement in here. If time is less than 10, then we're going to say u is equal to 0, else it's going to be equal to 2. And then we'll return our dy dt. Have our initial condition. In this case, it's 1. And then we have our time points. I'll do a thousand of those just to make it a very smooth plot. And then we solve with ODE int, and we're just going to plot the results. So let's run this one as well. So you can see the input changed from 0 to 1. I've plotted that with the U values. And then you can see the response on how the output looks, the Y value. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now we want to solve for X and y. Now these are going to give the same solution whether we do one or the other. And so we want to be able to solve both of these. So in this case we have two differential equations not just one. We need to combine these into a z value okay where we have x and y. 
All right, and so I'm going to compute dx dt and dy dt. And then I'm going to combine that into a single value, dz dt, which is going to be the two values, dx dt and dy dt. Okay, and I'm going to return that. So it's, I'm going to return a, a list of derivative values. I have my initial condition. In this case, I need two values because I have these two states that I'm calculating. And then I'll have some time points between 0 and 5. And then I'll solve the ODE just as I would before. But now I need to break out the Z values because I have two values in Z. And the way to do that is right here with the uh, Z, okay, uh, the first column. That's going to be my X. And then the second column is going to be my Y. Okay, I'll put in some things just to make the plot a little bit uh, clearer to see in terms of the results. And there you can see the results between the two. Okay, and those are equivalent as you can see. I want to go on to the final one. Now this one is just a little bit more complicated. Uh, but we have two differential equations. Okay, very similar as last time, but now we have a step function that's going to change from 0 to 1 at time equals 5. I want to set this one up just a little bit differently in a loop so that every time period that I want, I'm going to solve this differential equation, reset the initial conditions, and then solve it again. And this is going to be important for this class because we're going to do things like PID controllers that are going to take action, which might be the U value. That might be our controller output or our manipulated variable that's going to change based on how close we are to a set point. So we don't know that U value up front, perhaps, and so we want to be able to change it every cycle the sampling cycle, maybe once a second, we'd reevaluate and then input a new value of u. So I'm going to set this up in a loop, okay? Just like we did before, I'm going to have this model with the two states. And then I'm going to return the derivative values of these two. You can see that I've just divided these over, uh, divide by 2 and divide by 5, just to get the derivative values on the left-hand side. And then return the two derivatives. And I'll have my initial conditions. And number of time points is 401. All right, I'm going from 0 to 40 in 0.1 time intervals. Here's my step input that then I'm going to change at time equals 5. So that's going to be at 51, um, because each one is 0 0.1, so 51 is going to be time equals 5. And then I'll store the solution. So I need some place to just store these values as I'm going through this loop. I'll record the initial conditions as the very first entries in those. And then I'll solve the ODE in this loop one time step at a time. So first of all, I want to span just this first time point from 0 to point 0.1. And then the next time through the loop, it'll go from point 0.1 to point 0.2. So I'm going to put that all into ODE int with this new args and the t-span. And then I'll store the solution for plotting. So I just want to get the second step. I'm only going for one time step on each one. So just the second point. Now feed in the next initial condition for the solver. So that's going to be Z0. And then I'll plot the results. And that will give me uh, the solution. So it'll give me the solution if I run it. Let me go ahead and just run this one. And you'll see the solution down here. So it ran it just 0.1 time steps at a time and then made it out to time 40. 
Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. Again, if you'd like to get more information, just come to the PDC website, the Process Dynamics and Control website, and you'll be able to see more of this content with like Solve ODE and and you can also check out this other Python package for solving differential equations. And here's a link to solve all of these same examples, but with Gecko, the Gecko package. So just some examples of how to solve that first one. And then we'll go through a tutorial video here as well on how to do the same exercises as we just covered, but using Gecko.